Welcome back. We are home from our Mexico road trip and as you would imagine, there's a lot of things that need addressed, but first and foremost, my bees. I have two hives. I have not gone through a winter yet where I've lost both hives, but I did lose one. But the hive that I do have was my small hive going into winter last year. And so they're doing really well. It's early May and this hive is going to need a new super. What is a super? Super is the box that holds all of the honey. So traditionally in hives, you'll have a brood box, the brood chamber, which is the large box at the base of the hive, and then you'll have supers. And you add supers on top of the brood box as the season progresses and as the honey stores get full within the hive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in and look at my hive and I'll likely add a super because they have been um, doing great for this early and I just want to show you what that process looks like. When I get in there, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pull out the two frames that are on each side. Those generally do not contain brood or baby bees. They are generally honey stores. If there's any brood or if there's any um, babies in that, I'm going to leave those frames in the side of the top box and just add a blank super and I'll show you what that looks like. If the side frames don't have brood and they're just all honey, I will take those side frames and I will do what's called checkerboarding in the new super. I will put an empty frame, a honey frame, an empty frame, and a honey frame. This is when I take an empty frame and replace a honey frame. I take the honey frame and move it into the super that's going to be on top of this brood chamber. Now, if this exterior frame is also broodless and just full of honey, I'll do the same thing with this frame. <gasps> you all right? Do you want a do you want a hood? No, just finish it up. And what that does is it kind of establishes the order that the bees need to build within. There's a couple things in there that guide them, but every once in a while you'll get a hive that will just freeform and make these fantastical patterns in your hive. But it makes it really hard to manage the hive if that's your strategy. And I, there's a delicate balance between managing and let, letting the bees do their own thing. I tend towards the latter, but I do like a little bit of order in there from time to time. So that was it. It's really simple. That took maybe not even 10 minutes. Crack the hive, check the outside frames, re-establish those outside frames into the new super, spacing every other frame. And now they've got tons of room for their spring nectar flow. So they can go out, get as much nectar, as much pollen, as much honey is they can produce and they've got space to grow. So that's the point. That's the whole object for supering. And if you don't create enough space for the bees, the hive will outgrow its space and it will swarm. And sometimes hives swarm when there is enough space. It's not a given, 
but they don't want to live in a cramped area. So if you give them lots of free space to grow and collect honey and places to have their brood, the happier they're going to be. There are as many different styles of beekeeping as there are beekeepers and different philosophies. And I'm a very hands-off beekeeper. I maybe get into those hives three Once times, every two years. <laughs> three times, four, four times a season at the most. What I don't like about going in the hive is it's very, very invasive. This is a traditional classic hive setup and I got them as a first time beekeeper and I have them so I use them. They're not the style of hive that I would recommend just because when you go in, you're basically ripping the roof off the bee's house and rooting around in their home. And I just, I find that to be uncomfortable. It aggravates the bees and I just don't think it's necessary. There are hive designs that have the bees in mind more so than harvesting. So if you're interested in beekeeping, I would be happy to point you uh, to a couple sites where you can build your own and there's templates or you can just read a little more about alternative ways to be a beekeeper or be a friend of bees. Thank you for being here, and if you enjoyed the bee videos, give it a thumbs up. It really does help us creators. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. So how'd the harvest go? <laughs> I didn't harvest. I'm making way for potential harvest or just storage for the bees. But I got stung in the head. How to get through your bee hat? I have my hat off. I kind of, kind of got them riled up. But it happens. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. You're all right now. Yes, but you weren't getting the stinger out fast enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs>